Good evening. This is Maestro Cretello with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Broadcast. Today, we have a 1v1 on Quest's Heresy. Our first player today is Noisy, playing as the Force Commander. This right here, I believe, is... You know what? I don't know. I thought it was... I believe this is the Blood Angels Force Commander. Um, the Force Commander is a tanky melee hero. He starts out with a bolt pistol and chain sword, and you can get a few other different melee weapons like a power f fist, a uh, power sword, and a thunder hammer. Serve slightly different purposes. Force Commander, fairly straightforward in my opinion. Tank damage and do damage, pretty much. Next up, his opponent is Gidolo, playing as the Warp Spider Exarch. The Warp Spider Exarch is a teleporting hero. Primarily a ranged hero, but uh, compared to other ranged heroes, he's also really good in melee. Uh, especially, you can even upgrade him to get some heavy melee power blades. And we see he's got those dual blades right there, as well as the dual death spinners. He can be very annoying just uh, with tying things up, uh, teleporting around, applying map control pe pressure by capturing points. And here we see him actually about to go for a decap on Noisy's natural power. And if anything, I'm a little surprised. I guess Noisy right now is actually saving up for a second tax squad, which is actually, it's very surprising considering what I normally know and expect from Noisy, which is the triple scout build. Uh, Noisy is definitely one of the players who I've seen doing the triple scout build a lot. However, it makes a lot of sense for him to not go triple scouts against Eldar. Um, since scouts can be countered very, very hard by rangers. As it is, I expect we'll see rangers at some point anyway. Gilolo going for the Guardian weapon team first, and in some ways that makes more sense. Uh, Guardian weapon team does probably have some more overall utility. It's going to be more helpful for controlling the Force Commander, while still certainly working against the Tax and the Scouts. But I feel like Rangers, Rangers are just a fantastic unit, extremely powerful against Space Marines, more powerful against Space Marines than, than against other races. And uh, wow, Noisy very amazingly leaving these Tactical Marines in way too long. And if anything, I think he's just. I mean, he almost just got slightly lucky that these Banshees did not have Fleet of Foot. Because Noisy just lost two models on that attack squad. Um, any later in the game, like if those Banshees had Fleet of Foot, that probably would have been a wipe on the entire squad. So nearly attack squad loss for Noisy in that opening engagement. We've also got a huge power advantage for Gidolo because he's, he's got two generators. He actually has Noisy's natural power. So Noisy actually not doing very well at all on map control now. Although we might see this as something where Noisy starts off the game at a huge disadvantage and then somehow um, just pulls out a comeback. Uh, since, I w since he is obviously going to be the favorite player in this matchup, he's just one, one of the best Dawn of War 2 players around. And when I say one of the best, he's actually like top... I would say he's pretty much top three. Yeah, he's, he's definitely top three at this point. Um, and to be honest, arguably top one. So he may be the best Dawn of War 2 player right now. Adding support structure. And of course, some players can beat him. Uh, Gidolo is actually a very, very good player. Somewhat underrated. Uh, he seems to get, like, trash-talked a little bit. People seem to, like, try to deny that he's good. But he is actually very, very good. Um, it may have something to do with the fact that, like, Sometimes, like, when he loses, he'll kind of, like, complain. And sometimes his complaining will actually be kind of stupid. But he is a very, very good player, and he's had a lot of great games against a lot of great players. So, Gidolo's getting a double Guardian Weapon Team build instead. Uh, this does actually make a lot of sense. It is a pretty common Eldar play, and it's good for a lot of reasons. I'm just... I would expect to see Rangers against against Space Marines. I know I personally, I will always get a Ranger spot against Space Marines. Always, because they're just so good. Uh, this Guardian weapon team really needs to go, though. Tax win that melee fight handily, um, because I believe Guardian weapon teams do actually zero damage in melee combat. Or it might be just the platform itself that does zero damage, and then the Guardian models maybe just do very little.
Ooh, and I don't know if I missed it or were the scouts right there because noisy, sc the noisy scouts have been wiped. Uh, meanwhile, we've got some assault marines. They're jumping in. Uh, unfortunately, they're jumping. They're going to jump in. They might take out the worst fighter, Exarch. No, he teleports out, so he's just fine. But now we've got Banshees over here. Noisy hasn't really had much to counter the Banshees. He hasn't got, uh, he hasn't had shotgun scouts, so he's mainly just going to be relying on his force commander. But one of the things that's been said um, about the force commander is, is almost in a way, he's a melee counter, and yet in a way, there are ways in which um, melee can get around him. And I guess that's mainly because for him to counter melee, you need, really need to rely on units actually going toward the Forest Commander. And if you just run away from the Forest Commander, he doesn't counter melee that well, because they can just, like, run away from the battle cry. Um, compare that to Shotgun Scouts, which are not as easy to run away from. Or rather, not run away, but you can actually run past the Forest Commander. And as long as you, like, run around the, the battle cry arc... You can actually just like run past the force commander, and he can like go where he wants. Whereas um, the scout shotgun blast definitely is a, a little better in that respect. So noisy puts down a few generators. Uh, he is he is behind in tech, and he's actually upgrading to a power sword. He's got a significant advantage in requ requisition income, though, and at the moment he does have the map control, so, and he's, so he's got a lot of these plus 30 uh, requisitions, so he's getting a huge requisition income, plus 333, uh, and that's also considering he's running two attacks as well as assault space marines, so he's got a lot of very expensive units out on the field, and he's got massive requisition, requisition income, in part because he owns almost all requisition points on the map. One of the things that's also different about what Noisy is doing is that he's, he, like, he's, he's basically, well, he hasn't bothered to get shotgun scouts, so he's really, he really doesn't even have a whole lot of direct melee counters to the Howling Banshees. So, this is actually, yeah, it's probably not going to be engagement for this Guardian Weapon Team, which we'll have to get off. Uh, most of the models do not get backed by, do not get knocked down by the Assault Marines. Right here, oh, we had a attack model gived by that War Spider Exarch. He has been upgraded to have improved targeters, increases his range, as well as his range damage. And, uh, wow, that Guardian Weapon Team, unfortunately, not really paying attention. Force Commander walks right past, and the Guardian Weapon Team gets forced off. Where are the Banshees? That's, that's what I want to know. Now, the Banshees, if anything, I was a little surprised to see them walk around. I felt like they were down here. They could have gone for a power bash. Although, one thing that could be putting Noisy back in this game uh, is the fact that he has such overwhelming map control somehow, and that means he's doing better on resources. Even though he originally had a... Uh, even though he was originally behind in tech, he's got the better income. Certainly the better requisition income, although actually not the better power income since uh, Pitolo does have the full farm as well as a node on this VPN right here in the middle. Warp Fighter Exarch is actually in, uh, upgrading to the Power Blades, and I think that's pretty nice, uh, especially considering the build that Noisy's going with right now. Um, Noisy's not really not investing much in melee counters. In fact, he's actually using his scout squad right now with only one model just to capture points. So he's not even really using the scouts for as a melee counter. Um, and the worst starter Exarch, having these power blades are gonna make is gonna make him very good at teleporting in and tying up the tacks. Uh, whereas with his default blades, he wouldn't be that good at tying up the tacks. I mean, he could tie up the tacks, prevent them from shooting, but he wouldn't really be doing a lot of damage to them. And if anything, the tacks would probably out melee a um, a warp spider Exarch with who does not have the Power Blades. Power Blades are going to give him 53.57 DPS Power Melee. Not the hugest number, but that's definitely enough um, to deal with the attacks pretty nicely. And he'll he'll probably bleed models off the attacks if Noisy, if Noisy isn't careful. Unfortunately, this is now pretty bad positioning from Gidolo, just running out his two Guardian Weapons teams out forward like that. So we're going to see some jumping from the Assault Marines at some point. 
But wow, you know, and I guess one thing that one thing that does help, even with that bad positioning, was the fact that they're just two of the guardian weapon teams. Um, and you can often have them move around, and if one one team starts getting tied up, you kind of move that one away, draw it away, and then have the other one set up and just suppress whatever unit is trying to, to tie it up. So the double guardian weapon team team play actually does kind of counter assault marines, even though assault marines are supposed to counter a single setup team. And I think that's one of the things, I, I personally feel that the Eldar versus Space Marines matchup favors Eldar regardless of hero, and it's of course it's going to vary from hero to hero in terms of how much it favors which race, but I still just think that regardless of hero, Eldar is favored. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with, well, there, there are a lot of reasons I think that. Um, and I'm kind of just going to list some, uh, a few fairly su superficial ones, but even the Double Guardian weapon team play as, a, as an opening build, I feel is very good against a lot of the opening Space Marine builds. Um, double Guardian weapon teams kind of nullifies the Assault Marine jumps a bit, uh, as well as the fact that you have Howling Banshees, which are also going to... First of all, the Guardian Weapon Teams force the initiation by the Assault Marines, and then um, and then both the Banshees as well as the second Guardian Weapon Team punish that, count that counter initiation very hard. However, one thing that's definitely new in uh, Elite that's given, that's given Space Marines a bit of an edge are the Stern Guard Veterans, which are very, very powerful as an infantry counter, so they're very, very good on retreat. Give Space Marines a lot more retreat killing power than they had before. Um, and we saw that by the way that they finished off the Banshees in retreat. Wow, that Guardian Weapon Team in a lot of trouble and just barely survives. So now we actually have Dragon Fire Rounds loaded into the Stern Guard Veterans. This is the least commonly used, um, or definitely a less commonly used ammo war gear for the Stern Guard Veterans. But we actually saw that they were hitting both of the power generators at the same time. So, I actually, I think Stern Guard Veterans are, well, you know what, I think they're a, fan a fantastic choice against Eldar. First of all, they're going to be very good against the War Spider Exarch. Um, and we're also seeing right now the power of those those power blades. He just took out two models uh, from the tax or from the Stern Guard ver veterans. But the Stern Guard veterans are gonna absolutely destroy any Eldar any Eldar squad. Um, maybe not Dark Reapers, but most others. Certainly, they're absolutely gonna destroy Warp Spiders. Absolutely gonna destroy Dire Avengers. And although they can't afford to be in melee with um, with Banshees. They're going to do. They're going to murder the banshees on approach, and then murder them quite literally on retreat, and probably wipe them on retreat, which is exactly what we saw. Now, Gidolo chose not really to get a whole lot in tier two. He had he had a banshee exarch. He got the power blades, but other than that, he went to tier three and got a D cannon. That's that's pretty odd to be honest. He he went to tier three. He rushed to tier three to get a support weapon. And now he mostly has an army of support weapons. Uh, he's still got a VP lead. And as well as... Uh, he's also got a tech lead, to be honest. So there's definitely still... Still a lot of things... Uh, a lot of good things that are going to be going in Gidolo's favor. Although, right now I'm, I'm kind of liking the positioning of Noisy, first of all. Having the VP lead. Having the map control. Um, now being in a better position compositionally. Uh, one of the things that's really um, made things better for Noisy compositionally is that now he has both a teleporter pack, Force Commander, as well as Assault Marines. And that means he can very effectively deal with both of the di both of the Guardian weapon teams. Because he's got two units that can jump in. Um, Force Commander very powerful, and Assault Marines much more powerful in Tier 1 with a Sergeant. So they're going to be doing a lot of damage. And those Guardian Weapon Teams are going to be a lot... Um, just going to be much less scary than they were before. That being said, Warp Spider Exarch, he's uh, doing very well with these Power Blades. And let's see... 
Ooh, that was unfortunately a really, really bad jump by the Assault Marines. Lose their sergeant, lose a model. Might even, well, probably, they probably won't lose another one, but still. Grenade going in on the, oh no, the Stern Guard parents lose three models from that grenade. Oh my god. And just a few plays by, uh, by Gidolo, and suddenly he's in a very, very powerful position, and he's... He, oh, he got a new squad of Banshees, and I just realized, like, I just kind of took it for granted that he had Banshees, kind of forgetting the fact that he had lost one squad, and he, now he's gotten a fresh one. But Noisy suffered pretty hard in that engagement, lost three Stern Guard models to a grenade. And, uh, he, he did a really bad jump with the, with the Assault Marines. He jumped... Um, basically, he jumped. I I'm guessing he jumped trying to go for the D cannon, and then suddenly banshees. Suddenly banshees. There's the there's no verb. Just suddenly banshees. We shall make it so. Anyway, Tax sitting here in cover. I think hoping to protect this point, but I think the combination of what no what Gidolo has right now is actually going to overtake that because he's going to suppress the Tax with the Guardian weapon team, or with the with the Shuriken really. Uh, and then the D cannon, which in a way is a guardian weapon team in its own, is going to start doing some real damage to the tax. So I also missed it, but Gidolo lost one of his shuriken cannons. And what Gidolo is doing is very, very curious. A lot of Gidolo stuff is, is very, very curious. He was in tier 3 and he got a fresh squad of howling banshees. He could have gotten Seer Council. And I don't. I'm not going to crunch the numbers right on top of my head, but. Banshees are good because you can get them in tier 1 and they will level, but I feel like in tier 3, I don't think a squad of Seer Council costs that much more than a squad of Howling Banshees. So I almost feel like it would have been a much better idea to get Seer Council instead of Banshees. Autark calling for Gidolo though, so he's going to get an Autark instead. He's getting a lot of non-tier three things. He went to tier, th he rushed to tier three, and then got a lot of non-tier three things. So it's it's definitely a very curious play. Um, and right now, Gidolo is massively behind in VPs. I don't know. It's it's very curious, but you know, Gidolo is definitely a better player than me. So uh, I'm gonna trust him on this for now. He's, he's, he's very good. He is up against an extremely good player. Again, arguably the best player in the game right now. But uh, the it's just on paper the choices he's making look look kind of funny. The Eldar are capturing one of our strategic points. Meanwhile, what's Noisy gonna do? He's gonna get a third spot of assault marines, or does he just have assault marines on Overwatch? All right, he cancels the assault marines. He knows Noisy is in Tier 3, or I mean, he knows that Gidolo is in Tier 3. Although, with the way Gidolo is spending resources, I don't know, he... Like, we haven't... We, we actually, with Noisy's resources, we could have seen an Avatar, we could have seen Fire Prisms. Um, what else is in Tier 3? I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything, but we definitely have, there's an, an, there's an avatar, there's the fire prism, um, there's the Seer Council, and there's the Deep Heaven. I feel like I might be missing one. Anyway, but we still got double Assault Marines jumping around. Um, we had an Eldritch Storm completely wiping one of, completely wiping one of Noisy's tax squads. Missed it, but completely wiped the tax squad. So, Noisy now finally getting to Tier 3. And he's actually doing well enough on resources. And... Get a low... Okay. It's it's now just getting, like, totally weird. Get a low going for a Tier 3 Wraith Lord. So... Now, I'm starting to not give Gidolo the benefit of, the benefit of the doubt at this point. Let me th let me take a look at this again and maybe see if if something about Noisy's composition justifies a Wraith Lord. Huh. Well, no miss attack, so no real hard AV. But I mean, Force Commander wouldn't have too much trouble switching to a Power Fist. 
Double melt as though we're gonna stop a Wraith Lord in its tracks. Give it a 100% snare if both of them go off at the same time. Stern Guards are still bleeding models to the Warp Spider, but the Warp Spider, he is going to get wiped in retreat, I think. Close call, but yes, that happens. And now Gidolo does not have too many resources. He does not have a whole lot of requisition income. Noisy has good requisition income, uh, as well as just good income overall, and a lot of resources in the bank. So we might see some kind of super use unit from Noisy. So one Melta Bomb goes off on the Wraith Lord. I mean, this Wraith Lord definitely will force some kind of new purchase from Noisy. Um, but I feel like he's got plenty of things that he can do. It really would not hurt him that much. It would not hurt his economy that much to get a Power Fist, as expensive as that is. Um, I guess the main thing is that the Power Fist would actually be the cheapest and best option at this point, since anything else is going to require him to get an entirely new squad. Or new anything. But, I mean, he's got plenty of resources. He can afford to get a new anything. Alright, get a little taken back the map, though, in part because Noisy is floating resources. Although, I don't know if he's saving up for a Land Raider. What he wants to do. But anyway, attacks doing a lot of damage. Gidolo goes for a hard grenade throw. That's kind of surprising. Usually, at, at this level of play, they won't do that. They won't just go up for a hard grenade throw, kind of because it's just not going to hit. But on the other side of that, there is the fact that you can do it just to force your opponent to move. Anyway, that looks like the Terminator calling. Assault Terminators. Uh, assault Terminators just need to be very, very careful about these Banshees. So we're going to see double double assault jump at that time. You even have a very weak squad, but they're just going after a Guardian weapon team or uh, Dire Avengers. And I'm actually surprised to see all of these Assault Rangers retreat. I'm not surprised to see the weakened squad retreat, but I feel like the not weakened squ squad could have stayed in there a while. And... Uh, Whoa. The Assault Terminators... The question now is, can they finish off the Wraith Lord? They teleported away from the Wraith Lord so that they would not get sucked in by the Singularity. And then... So that they could... And actually also force off the D Cannon. But I think they gave up the opportunity to take out the Wraith Lord. And I think that might have been the bigger prize. So I think that might have been a missed opportunity from Noisy. Um, let's see, VP's 180 to 42. Noisy with the VP lead, but he did lose his Force Commander in that engagement. And now he actually switches out one of his Assault Marines for Vanguard Veterans, and he revives his Force Commander. We've got Gidolo with the double cap, but Noisy's about to get back his natural. This one will probably stay contested for a little bit. We've got um, Terminators just staying up here. And it is possible that they could possibly just stand on the point and capture. Right now they are being stalled by the Banshees as well as the Autark. And if anything, I think Noisy might want to turn around and go for the point. Now the Banshees are going to engage again. Alright, Terminators are now in a bit of trouble, and now this Wraith Lord is all healed. Terminators, alright, they're not in so much trouble because they scare off the Banshees, and that was really the main source of damage against them. Banshees, definitely going to be a huge source of damage against the Terminators. Uh, it's just that the Terminators have a very con considerable health advantage. And now, Noisy is looking strong, but as strong as he's looking... Uh, Gidolo staying in this game, in part because he's doing things like putting up webway gates right here, spawning his Banshees as well as his Warp Spider Exarch, and that means he can capture with the Warp Spider Exarch while the, while the Assault Marines or the Banshees chase off anything else. So, I think part of what's going on is that, um, right now Noisy is having trouble keeping the points and getting a double cap to close out the game, uh, in part because of the kind of VP and map control pressure that Eldar puts on. Now, Noisy's getting a decap right here. It really wouldn't be too hard for any of these units, even just if the Dire Avengers just go in here, right? Go into this, um, and basically if they're just going to do exactly what I say they're going to do, that's going to be enough to scare Noisy off. So it's soon to be another triple cap uh, in favor of Gidolo. And, like, part of what Gidolo is doing is he's really taking advantage of Eldar strengths right here. I don't know about some of his unit purchases in this game, but 
he's definitely really taking up Eldar's strengths with the with map control, with the Warp Spider Exarch, and with the Webway Gates. And that's something that is definitely very, very powerful for Eldar. Like, I feel like, as a 1v1 player, I've definitely played against Eldar players who have not fully exploited that. And even to the extent that I play Eldar, which is, I actually do kind of play Eldar, I, it's, I definitely haven't fully exploited it myself. And it's something that's very unique and specific to Eldar, the way you can exert map control pressure um, with their units, with their speed, with webway gates, because it's it's something that almost in a way it's it's extremely difficult for other races to keep up with because the other races just don't have map control on par with that. They just don't have options like webway gates um, and what that brings in terms of map control and your ability to hold points and keep the points. That was a a short teleport. I feel like they could have teleported farther if their objective was to take out the Wraith Lord. But it seems like the Wraith Lord might get out of there anyway. I think it might have been worth it for the Wraith Lord to finish off that Vanguard squad. But actually not, because he's actually going to get the Wraith Lord out of there alive. So Vanguards got pulled in. <gasps> oh, okay. The D Cannon actually finished off the Vanguards. Wow. What a shot. So Gidolo actually came out very, very nicely on that, in that engagement. I was going to say he should have sacrificed his Wraith Lord to take out the Vanguard. But he actually didn't he didn't need to. He saved the Wraith Lord and took out the Vanguard with the D Cannon. So any uh, Seer Council are a good choice against the Assault Terminators, but Noisy has put for the for the Emperor on them, and that's kind of scaring um, Gidolo away from actually committing to this engagement with his Banshees. Now he's friendly firing his Seer Council, committing to the engagement with his Seer Council. He's friendly firing his Seer Council with the D Cannon, so they run off. Banshees were in a, d a different place entirely. If he actually has both like his his Seer Council as well as his Banshees together, they are going to really, really murder the Terminators. And now finally, we have um, a fully upgraded Shotgun Scout, or at least they've got the Shotgun and their Sergeant. I don't know if they have any infiltration. Extremely risky teleport from the Terminators, teleporting in to go after a D-Cannon, but the Seer Council are here. Why did the Seer Council stop ignoring them? <gasps> because the Autark is going to go down. And unfortunately, I think Gidolo is now not having a very good engagement. The uh, Seer Council are clearly overextended and are probably going to go down here in this engagement. Grenade goes in, knocks over the Assault Marines, and the Force Commander goes in to finish off with a Power Fist. And I'm not I'm surprised the Wraith Lord is even still alive. Now Noise is going to stay in this game because, again, we have the War Spider XR coming out of the webway, holding this point. And he's still, still got this VP right over here, holding it with the Guardian Weapon Team. He can put in Banshees into this, um into this webway and then try to hold it. I mean, all his Banshees are actually over here trying to hold this point, but we're seeing a lot of For the Emperor um, from Noisy. He's just using that global. It is a global that increases the damage of a targeted squad. He's going to lose those Banshees. All right, he might not lose the squad of Banshees. <gasps> wow, what a decannon shot finishing off that squad of Assault Marines. We've got now a Singularity about to pull in the Terminators, and it looks like Noisy just giving up with the Terminators. That's probably going to be the end of the Terminators right here, even though it didn't wipe them. Here comes the... The Terminators have 20 hit points. 20 hit points. Can they get finished off? They're not getting finished off because they're basically immune to piercing damage at the moment right now with the... Well, certainly uh, this Wraith Lord does not have a ranged weapon. And it goes down from the Force Commander. So 16 VPs for Noisy, 42 for Gidolo. Oh my, Gidolo can't even get, capture the point because of the Force Commander finishing off that Dire Avenger. And that's that's something that can... Oh, and the Warp Spider Xtark goes down. And in these last few seconds, it's actually now really starting to go in favor of Noisy. But that's something that can be very, very frustrating. When you're trying to capture with a squad and you're just trying to finish the cap and you actually stop capping because you lose a model because and the the model that dies is the one that's close enough to the VP and the other models in the squad aren't close enough almost needs his own stern guards stern guards are level 4 scouts level 2 force commander level 7 worst better extract level 6 and at level four, lots of things. We shall make 
All right, so Banshee spawn out of the webway. Tie up. Wow, and we actually have another weapon switch from the Forest Commander. He's gone from the Power Sword to the Power Fist to now the Thunder Hammer. And, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense because um, the Wraith Lord is gone. So he doesn't have to worry about the Wraith Lord anymore, and now the biggest threat would actually be the Banshee. So it makes sense that he's going to invest in the Thunder Hammer for that. Another squad of Terminators, and I don't know what Gidolo is going to do about this. Um, but one of the things that's definitely been really, really powerful and noisy has been the Stern Guard veterans, and that's... <laughs> it's, it's really, really been good just for dealing with the Banshees, because if the Banshees leave an engagement and they don't have much health left, they're, it's extremely risky for them because they might get wiped on retreat. So Gidolo still has a chance here, but we've got the Stern Guard veterans about to open fire on the Banshees. Banshees need to just like run forward. Oh no. So there are the Terminators teleporting in. What is that going to be? That's going to be an Eldritch Storm on top of his own Banshees. Unfortunately, I don't think that was such a great choice. He's doing more damage to himself than he is to Noisy. And now he's just going for the VP with his Dire Avengers. They're going to start losing models. They might be able to get the decap unless the same thing happens before. All right, they've managed to get the decap. And what do we have here? We've got <laughs> the Banshee Exarch running to her death. D cannon prevents the assault terminators from doing anything, but I mean now it's actually really, really looking like Noise's game. I mean, clearly this game has been uh, very back and forth, and it's very, very close. But um, at this point, I don't, I honestly don't see Gidolo coming back from this. In part because we've got double, ter double assault terminators from Noisy. We've got a force commander. We've got this, the stern guard veterans, which have definitely been the MVP of this game, um, and. Gidolo has an army of support weapons right now. He's got a D-Cannon, a Shuriken, which is going to do fuck all against, against the Terminators. The Terminators can just stand right here and just capture the point. And they can, like, just kill... They can, and they could just capture the point. I, I actually think it would have been better for him to just stand on the point and just capture the point. The enemy is claiming a victory point. Uh, and D-Cannon, while I was trying to target it, got wiped. Anyway, it's actually, it's still a double cap for Gidolo, though. So it is a double cap for Gidolo. Force Commander does not get knocked over by that grenade. I'm wondering if he used Battlecry. Wow, 1 to 10. If he... I think he used, must have used Battlecry just to not get knocked over by the grenade. And that's hilarious. Because if he had not used Battlecry, he actually would have lost right there. And that's... I think that's what Gidolo is commanding about. Because... If this Force Commander had gotten knocked over by the grenade, that would have been the game in favor of Gidolo, and now it's the game in favor of Noisy. Fury are rewarded with victory. Or the Force Commander just didn't get knocked back, because Gidolo's saying lucky, Noisy's saying not lucky, or Noisy's, Noisy's actually agreeing. Um, otherwise, I, I, I had assumed, since the Force Commander did not get knocked back by the grenade, that he had activated Battlecry to get knocked back immunity. So, that was a pretty crazy game. Certainly a very high-level game, although Gidolo's choices still extremely confuse me. Going to Tier 3, buying three Tier 2 units in Tier 3, and buying a fresh squad of Howling Banshees instead of buying Seer Council. But, well, that's just how it went. So, I hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.